All right, guys, it's time to talk about goals and my financial plan for the next five years. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name's Rachel, and this channel is all about personal finances. Today, I wanna to take a little time to talk about my five-year financial plan, or I guess you could say my five-year path to financial freedom and the kind of big picture I have for my debt-free journey, which um, if you guys saw my debt journey video, you know I've drawn up this little vision board, which um, I know it looks like a little kid drew it, but uh, this is just kind of what I sketched out for my five-year financial plan. So I kind of want to dive deeper into that today. Um, I do, I did already do a 2021 money goals video, and if you missed that, I'll have it linked down below. But this um, plan, I just broke it down by year um, because looking at the amount of debt that I have, which is all student loans, and it is about $186,000, um, I think we all know to look at a large goal like that, it's much easier to break it down into more bite-sized steps. And for me, the, the way I did that to keep it kind of simple and also, um, I think it'll just be a way, you know, for me personally to look at things on a year to year basis. And maybe that's a little too broad scope for many people. Some people like monthly goals, some people like semi-annual goals. I, I'm happy just thinking about an annual goal on a, on kind of a bigger picture basis. So it's just what works for me. Um, or at least I think it does. I'm only, well, we're almost six months into this year now. So I'm only about six months into this five year plan, but so far it's going pretty good. And thinking about it and in, in terms of what I can accomplish this year, um, still feels right for me. So that's what I'm going to stick with. So, um, today we're just going to go through what I have broken down year by year. And of course, the basis for every goal is to really think about the why behind your goal, where you want to be and your why, why do you want to get there? So obviously for me, that is paying off of all of my student loan debt. So in the center of my vision board is kind of my why, which is debt-free, time freedom, and rescue animals like that's just how I want to spend that time freedom playing with animals so I know that's kind of cheesy but whatever it's personal to me that's what I want to do if I had more time if I didn't have this particular job working these hours I would absolutely have another dog or I would have and when I say another I don't have one now but I had one when I first started this job and he has since passed away and I have not gotten another one just because I, I can't I can't, sometimes I work 12 hour shifts, so that just doesn't work for a dog or I would not want to do that to a dog. So big driver for me, like I need a dog in my life. So that is like very important to me, but also time freedom. I don't want to have to work for somebody else. I want it to be a choice. And obviously I'm always gonna work in some aspect or another, whether I'm financially free or not, but I just want to enjoy my job in case I haven't said it before or you haven't picked up on it I do not enjoy my job in the least bit it sucks the soul out of me that's all I can say I don't know if there's no other way to say it um, and then of course debt free like I have dealt with debt for since I was 18 which is 18 years ago <laughs> Um, half my life now I have dealt with debt or I guess maybe I didn't have debt right away at first but in some aspect I have struggled financially and that's not to say it's always been just a huge struggle it's been you know waxes and wanes with the kind of amount of struggle that that money or finances or debt has brought to my life but in some way or another I have struggled financially for the last 18 years and I'm really sick of that, you know? I, grateful for all the experiences that I've had. I'm glad I struggled when I was young because it can set you up to learn from your mistakes and be better with your money going forward. So I'm forever grateful for that. I, I can't say that I'm not, but to be free of this student loan debt would be, be like, 
I don't know what I would do with myself. I can't even begin to think about what time freedom would look like, but it's a goal. Anyway, so in getting to my goal or achieving my why of time freedom and debt freedom, um, there's also, I basically broke that down into four check boxes and what that looks like things I want to have ultimately accomplished by the end of this five years that will make me debt free and financially free and have time freedom. So it's broken down by year, but ultimately there's four items that I want completed in five years. And so those are student lane loans are paid off is the first one. Financially free is another one. And so obviously when my student loans are gone, won't necessarily mean that I'm financially free if I end up with some other debt between now and then. So, and, and I don't necessarily mean a mortgage. Um, that is something that I would not look at as if I had that, I'm not financially free. That's like the one thing that I would make an exception for is a mortgage, nothing else, no credit card debt, never again in my life. I pray never again. Um, I don't want to buy another new car again unless I can pay for it cash. And the reason I bought this one I have is because I am very certain it should have no trouble lasting me many years to come. So buying a new car shouldn't be a problem, but, but that's what I mean by financially free. Like no more, no new debt between now and then. So student loans paid off financially free. I would like to have six rental units. Um, if you guys have been following my journey, you know that I was working on buying my first rental unit this year and I have completed that, so that's exciting. By the end of this five years, I want to own six of them. And I think in my mind, the passive income from six rental units would be a very strong kind of monthly income rate for me because I live very cheaply. I know some people would like gasp at only six, but you know, for me, that's just a number that I have and a really solid starting place, I think for, for coming out the other end of this with no debt and already having passive rental income is really going to go a long way for getting me to financial freedom. So six rental units. And then I want to be making $2,000 a month online. Again, that's a goal. I don't know how yet <laughs> still working on it, but it's a goal. So between passive rental income and making money online, if I could somehow make it work, by just being a landlord and having rental income and online income and whatever kind of work is involved in making that online income, it would essentially be me working for myself. So that would just be amazing. I wouldn't have to work and that would be the ultimate time freedom. That is the goal. So student loans paid off, financially free, six rental unit income, six rental units and making 2000 a month online. So those are my four big goals at the end of this five year journey, which by the way, I started for this year, 2021. So this would be by the end of 2025. So like I said, I did already make a, uh, another video a few weeks ago about my 2021 money goals. Um, so I already went over those, but I'm going to um, touch on those again briefly here. So with each of the five years, I broke the years into check boxes. So for each one, I either have three or four goals for the year. So for 2021, I had four goals. And one of those is to fully fund my sinking funds, which is um, includes my general emergency fund, a car or vehicle maintenance fund, a vet and medical fund, and then my Roth IRA for for the year. Um, I just completed today, um, fully funding my Roth IRA for 2020. So now I can finally start on my 2021 contributions, but that'll be in a budget video to come. That's not what's important. So I'm still working on fully funding my sinking funds. I do have my general emergency fund, which has about six month, uh, months of expenses. That is completed, but I have not completed the car maintenance or the vet and medical funds yet. So I'm still working on those, but I'm getting close. The second item for 2021 was I want to close on my first rental property, which I just did the beginning of this month. So that's very exciting. So that is one of the four items complete, which I know the year is already half over almost, but it's okay. And then the next one is pay $30,000 to student loans this year. 
And then the fourth one is to start making money online or some kind of side hustle. So one out of four down, still working on the others, doing okay. You know, we're getting there. And then for next year, 2022, I also have four more goals. Again, I want to pay another $30,000 to my student loan debt. I want to buy my second rental property. I want to have a positive net worth and I want to make $200 a month online by the end of the year. So seems pretty reasonable. Um, the net, the net worth is slowly coming up. We're still pretty hardcore in the negative just because $186,000 in debt is kind of hard to come up from, but between all my retirement accounts and now my, um, rental property and other investing accounts, my savings, or excuse me, emergency fund, I am coming up in net worth. So we're getting there. And now for 2023, I have three goals for 2023. The first one, I want to pay $40,000 to my student loans. I want to buy my third rental property and I have a goal to make 500 a month in online income by the end of the year. So only three goals. That's exciting. And yes, the value that I want to pay to student loans went up a little bit, but I think I can handle that. 2024. So year four, I want to pay again, $40,000 to student loans. I want to buy my fourth rental property and I have a goal of making a thousand dollars a month in online income or side hustle income by the end of the year. Pretty reasonable. All right. Year five. 2025, obviously. Three more goals. Pay $45,000 to student loans. Buy my fifth and sixth rental property, which I'm lumping into one goal. And make $2,000 a month online. I know, they're just goals, <laughs> okay? Whether we get there or not, whatever. It's something to strive for. So, I absolutely think I can do these. Um, it just might look a little different as far as the rental properties are concerned, for example, or what I mean by that is maybe I won't buy a rental property next year, but then the year after that, I'll buy like a multifamily that has three units and then there's three in one, like, or at least that's how I'm kind of looking at it at this point in time. Um, maybe in the future i'll consider a whole multi-family property in one property which i think is most how most normal people would think about it <laughs> but i'm just looking at number of doors i guess um so you know it may look different i uh, maybe this year i won't get to the full thirty thousand dollars towards my student loans and you know what i might not and that's just because this year i've been focusing on getting the emergency funds funded back funding my Roth 2020, getting my car and vet and medical um, funds funded just because both of those have crept up on me this last year in January when my cat passed away and I had a huge emergency vet, vet bill. And then last month when I had to pay for Invisalign out of pocket, that was $5,000. So, you know, these things come up and those two items have certainly set me back. Um, but I know it's going to be okay. So if I don't get the full 30,000 to my student loans this year, I'm not going to be mad at myself. It's just, Hey, I didn't get there. Maybe I'll get to make up for it next year or the year after that. It doesn't matter. Um, I think that this year is just going to be the tougher one for me just because, um, I have finally gotten rid of, or last year I finally got rid of all of my private student loans and I paid, you know, I bought my new car and paid it off in seven months. And, I was just getting those kind of foundational things out of the way um, so that I could move forward and actually have an emergency fund for the first time, you know, more than a thousand dollars. Like I, for me to feel comfortable, I wanted six months of expenses. So now I finally have that and I want a fund where I don't worry about how much, you know, my car is going to cost when I take it to the shop or how much the vet's going to cost when I take the cats in. Like it just, I'm finally at that place as of this year. So I'm not putting too much pressure on myself this year just because things have been so shaky up until now or, you know, 
six months ago, really. And, you know, I, like I said, I'm still working on funding my accounts. So they're just goals. You know, if, if you have, what am I trying to refer to her? I don't know. Let's consult the wine. So this has just been a look at my game plan for the next five years. And are you okay? Sorry, the little kitten just, <laughs> um, where was I? Yeah. So this is just my game plan for the next five years to get to financial freedom and bring this debt free journey to a close. Hallelujah. And hope that I never have to go on one ever again. So that's really it. I know this is not a complicated plan by all means, or any means, by any means. But if something's complicated, it's not my jam. I'm not going to do it. I like simple, basic, basic bitch shit. You know what I mean? So, this, and you know how goals, you know, you write them down a year from now, you're like, what the hell was I doing? Who knows, maybe this will change, but I doubt it. I, I feel like this is a pretty solid roadmap. Um, honestly, the major focus of any of this is gonna be paying off the student loans. And aside from this year, cause like I said, I'm working, you know, my priority first is emergency fund and my car and medical funds, especially while student loans are still in forbearance until September. So if I don't get the 30,000 this year, whatever, it'll be my priority in the year to follow. So getting rid of those is first and foremost gonna be my main priority. If I have a year where I can't afford to pay off the student loan amount I wanna pay off and buy an investment property, well then screw the investment property, I'm gonna pay off the loans. I, I am so sick of student loans. It, God, I, I'm, I mean, I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. So. I'm not gonna harp on it, but that's gonna be my priority year after year, no matter what, until those damn things are gone. So, you know, who knows? We'll see what happens with them and, and the aspect of, you know, there's some talk that Biden may forgive some of them, maybe not, maybe there'll be an income cap. You know, I've mentioned this before. I'm sure you all have heard it on the news or from other people, but you know, we'll see how that plays in as well. If there's some forgiveness, great, if not, so be it you know it, it just that's going to be my number one priority no matter what because when those are gone i know no matter what even if i'm not able to quit working i know when my loans are gone i'm the freedom i'm going to feel regardless is just astronomical so that's that's all that matters to me so so there <laughs> anyway so that's it for today's video guys your guys' support and encouragement is so appreciated and has made me so happy. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.